So to set the scene, it's around 2.30 in the morning in the Jersey Shore paradise known as Sea Isle City. That means it's time for the three bars that are located within a two-block radius to let out at the same time and all hell to break loose. And it's just my luck that I get paired with literally the worst kind of group to get paired with at that time of night. Now I know a lot of people say they could never tolerate a car full of girls late night. Duh. I mean, oh, that's Wait, no! No! I love that one! Oh, oh, this one's good. And sure, uh, how do I say this nicely, since I really like these girls? When you max out that feminine party energy, at times it can borderline annoying. All right, all right, all right, all right. She's something crazy. All right. Sorry, we don't know her. But I can deal with annoying. Annoying may give me a headache, but it won't break my jaw. The worst group to pick up late night is a car full of dudes. Nine out of ten times, it's gonna be a problem. You see, the only reason four dudes will stay out in one of those godforsaken establishments until close is because they are hammered and they're hoping to get lucky. So by the time they get in my car, they're filled with nothing but alcohol, testosterone, and rejection and looking for any sort of way to get rid of that energy. Come on, TV! Come on, TV! TV right here for Sean. Yeah, how are you doing? Let's go, Chief Keith! Chief Keith! Yeah, yeah, you're on the other side. Oh, fuck. Damn, who's he talking about? Yeah. I'm tough as fuck, dude. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Chris. Come back. <laughs> I'm tough, Chief. Thank you. That's the fudgy wudgy. Yeah, let him be the I'm fudgy wudgy. Trust me. I'm yeah. back in the middle, Cat. You're in the grass. You're in the. You're in the okay. Cat, just move you're over. Hey, hey, guys. Yo. Yeah, oh God, yeah just move I over, guys. I'm, gl I'm, I'm, I'm glad y'all having a good time. Real. Can we just take it down like a notch yeah, or two? Is that cool? Sorry, I had a bad feeling about this ride from the jump but I thought it would be unfair to cancel on them on that feeling alone because at that point, they hadn't really done anything other than being obnoxious. Plus, I thought it would give them reason to find the fight they were obviously looking for. Yeah, I'm yeah. honestly trying to fight a bouncer and he's being a pussy about it. He won't <laughs> fight. <laughs> that they'd find that fight in me or somebody around me. Yo, stop walking for me. Why you the fuck over me, bitch? <laughs> you want to be a pancake? Yo, Barbie, stop he walking. Said, stop walking. walking. He said stop walking. He said stop walking. You want to be a Barbie or a pancake? You want to no, be a barbie or a And he's like, I could have, I should have kept driving. Yeah, we <laughs> I thought if I could get them out of that area, they'd calm down. Spoiler alert, they did not calm down. <laughs> you got a room for oh, no. he said, hot dog car slap. Before the plot thickens, I have to say, whenever a white dude is using the N-word as a term of endearment, it's a major red flag. And I know a lot of people are going to call him a racist for using that word. And by the end of this ride, I'd be willing to call this guy a lot of things. But I don't think it's fair to call him racist. Like, who is he being racist towards? Me? Personally, I think it's the opposite. To steal a little J. Cole wisdom, if I'm gonna keep it real, I think he wants to be black and thinks using that word is how it feels. Cole World. Yeah, CK, now. Oh, I got you. I got you. Oh, CK. CK's good. Niggas from CK are sweet like sugar. Where are you guys from? Uh, it's not Inner it's world, nigga. Yeah. Now, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this. I think that word and everything that surrounds it is one of the more perplexing aspects Aspects of the English language. Never Yo, can we all ride? Yeah, we'll Yo, we'll smoke you up. No, you mind if we just, you guys just yeah, wait till you get can, back? We, we Thanks, so. though. There's just so many cops around. Yeah. It's worth the wait. Yeah. 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 Blunt yeah. Or yeah. We smoke. The what else What's up? No, I, I'm good. I yeah, appreciate I'm that, though. Thank you. Wait till you go. Even though you see me laughing and getting along, that's just good customer service. At this point, I had been kicking myself for not canceling the ride from the start because I know with guys like this, things can change on a dime. Plus, the way these guys were treating me the entire time was like that weird middle ground in between endearing and condescending. Like this, for example. <laughs> I got no problem with that nickname. But when you call me that the first time I ever met you, after you just obviously lied to me repetitively about not having weed in the car as if I gave a shit, it's like, I know what you're doing by calling me that, and I don't like it. If you get what I'm saying, drop an Eddie Spaghetti in the comments, and if you don't, 
Here's a more clear-cut example of that patronizing attitude. Yo, I think this is loud as you can yell at this beginning. <laughs> right, if you want a good tip, you're going to turn this up for us. <laughs> Might as well say dance, monkey, dance. So I could not tell you how badly I wanted this ride to end. And it just so happened in this moment, there was a police car parked across the street. So I thought about pulling up next to the cop and asking them to get out. And here lies the comedy of the American criminal justice system. I just wanted them out of my car peacefully, and ideally, a peace officer would be the perfect vessel to assist in that. But unless that officer didn't have nine he was gonna smell the weed they had on him. And if they got in legal trouble just because I was uncomfortable, I'd feel terrible. I didn't want anyone to get arrested. I just wanted this ride to end. The funniest part to me is 95% of the reason these guys are acting like total jackasses is due to alcohol. And the only reason I asked them not to smoke is because it's illegal and I was afraid passing a blunt around in the car would draw attention to us and get me pulled over. And what a mess that would be. And the irony of it all is marijuana would have calmed them down a bit and made them less aggressive. <laughs> Yo, dude, come on, man. This is my car. Guys, I'm having fun. It's all cool. There, I, even if you are smoking, I don't care. I know. I just don't like the lighter. Listen, just don't, just don't light up there. Just don't light up there. That's all it is, right? It's understandable, right? This is my car. We're a mile down the way, bro. This is what happened. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about no lighter. We're not lighting your fucking car on fire. Take us where we gotta go, bro. Yo, don't listen. Don't listen to him, bro. Just go. No, no, cat. Take us where we gotta go, nigga. Shut up. Keep driving. Straight up. Turn this shit back up. Turn this shit back up, too. Sean. Yo, turn it up. You heard me, right? Sean, you see where my hands are? Yeah, you had the lighter down, bro. Yo, no, you, you fucking me, right? retard. Yo, He's come on, man. Bro, come on. turn the fucking music up. I'm not trying Sean, to retard. I will tell you. I'm trying to turn the music up. Shut up. Turn it up. You guys unplugged it. All right, turn the fucking music up. Nobody's laying your car fire. Turn the music up. I'm not trying to You, turn you unplugged up. it. I can't. Right. It's, it's up. I hear it, don't you? Turn it up. <laughs> turn it up. Now when I pulled over to make the asinine request not to light my seat on fire, this is where it happened. I was having a hard time focusing on the road and dealing with the idiots in the back and there was a car behind me so I thought it was a wise move to move to the side and try to regain control of my vehicle, which I had obviously lost. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about a lighter. We're not lighting your fucking car on fire. Take us where we gotta go, shut up. But once that other car's lights faded into the darkness, I immediately realized that this was not a good place to be in this situation. Not only was it four against one, you hate to admit it because they were being assholes, but each one of them looked like they can handle themselves in a fight. I know it's nice to pretend that just because they seem like bad guys, they would automatically lose a fair fight, but unfortunately, that's just not how the world works, and if anything were to happen on that dark road, I had no recourse. No one to break it up, nowhere to go, not even an impartial bystander to witness it. I didn't have patience here as much as I had no other choice. And that was the most frustrating part, that feeling of powerlessness. And I know a lot of people say that this is why Uber drivers need to carry, and I get that. But going back to our wonderful criminal justice system, even though I live 15 minutes from the state line, Jersey doesn't recognize permits from Pennsylvania or any other state for that matter. It's a mandatory three-year prison sentence if you get caught. And as much as I hated that feeling of powerlessness, something that I thought of is the value of not having a gun in this situation. If I did have a gun on me, I may be a little less prone to tuck my tail in between my legs and keep driving. You're talking to me? But instead, I was forced to do everything I could to de-escalate the situation. And sure, in theory, I see these guys treating me like that, and I bet it would have been one of the best feelings in the world to have been able to flip the script on them. Huh? But in reality, I don't want anyone to actually get shot, you know? Now, I fully recognize that I'm only saying this because this ride ended okay. If it had went south, despite my best efforts to avoid it, I'm sure I'd be singing a different tune. All I'm saying is that by not having a gun, it forced me to find another way. In related news, I am definitely getting myself some bear mace. As I was trying to reason with the dude in the front seat, little did I know what was unfolding behind me. I'm 
behind, behind the sign. Yeah. yeah. For you, what you do. I'm not asking much. I'm paying. I'm paying, motherfucker. You're my, you're my guy, dude. I, I, I'm sorry for the disrespect, bro. Eddie should be respecting my rules. No, blow the stop. Talk about character development. Not only did the dude behind me just turn into my biggest threat, Mr. Turn the Music Up or Else is the one who's sticking up for me. Alcohol is one hell of a drug. And to be honest, I think it's even deeper than that. It's easy to see bad behavior in someone else, but it's really hard to see it in yourself. Mr. Turn the Music Up was quick to correct the guy behind me, even though he was treating me the same way not even two minutes prior. Uh, no, no cat. Take us where we gotta go, nigga. Shut up. Bro, <laughs> turn on. the fuck so many people say I shouldn't blur their faces out, that I should expose them. But the thing is, this isn't who they are. This is just the way they acted in this moment, on a drunken Uber ride with their boys, caught in a battle of ego. That's all this was. Put these guys in any other scenario. Shoot, put this group in my car on the way to the bar, and I bet they would have been one of my better rides of the night. All right, guys, have a good night, man. Appreciate it, Eddie. Sorry yeah, no problem. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Have a good one. Sorry, All right, man. Sorry Take care, guys. Hey, it's all cool. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Seeing him apologize on video was such a lesson for me because in that moment, I was so worried about getting hit that, sure, I heard it, and you even see me respond to it, but I wasn't listening. I legit don't remember it happening. And don't get me wrong. I think I was more than justified to be defensive in that scenario, but it does make me wonder how many many other times in my life that my fears or my insecurities made me miss something or mishear something that someone's trying to say. It also makes me think about how important it is to make sure that whoever it is I'm talking to feels comfortable enough to listen. And once that threat of a broken jaw left my car, I'm not proud to say it, but my first thought went to the revenge that I had been plotting since the moment they strong-armed me. You want to punk me like that? How about I really act like a punk and file assault charges? Most people don't realize, but assault isn't a matter of physicality. That's battery. All it takes for an assault charge is inflicting fear that bodily harm will occur. Then I thought, maybe I just post this video unedited for the world to see. Even though I don't think these guys are racist, I also know that anytime a white guy says the N-word, it's like a layup for cancel culture. Good luck finding a job ever, asshole. And this was my anger talking. Deep down, I know I wouldn't have went through with either of those things. Revenge is not good for the soul. And the middleman's apology, one that I actually heard, Help me remember that. Hey, you too, dude. Take it. Oh, it's all good. Oh, it's all cool. I appreciate you saying that. Seriously, though. Did, did he like my thing on fire? Yeah, yeah. Nothing was there. I made sure it was back here. All right. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. I'm really sorry. Hey. Like so many other aspects of this ride, I didn't realize it until I watched this video back that that middleman was actually doing everything he could to keep things under control throughout. And that whole thing about, see where my hands are, and he was choking me. Sean, you see where my hands are? Yes, oh, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That middleman had both of those dudes in a headlock holding them back because he knew as well as anyone how close they were to swinging. I mean, I could feel it in the air that I was close to getting hit, but hot damn, I didn't know it was that close. Here is the full video without my commentary if you're interested. Might be cool to see it now that you know the inner thoughts of an Uber driver stuck in a situation like this. All in all, it's probably the worst Uber ride from start to finish I've ever experienced. And as always, thanks for watching.